Yo, Dale! What is this? Wild West? Hey, bud. This is awesome, man. Hey, Jerry, I'm glad you made it, bud. This is great. Glad you're here, man. Let's talk about the Kentucky Derby. Oh, I can't wait. Let me tie this gal up. We're going to have a lot of fun today. All right. Let's talk some horsepower. <laughs> Jerry, thanks for coming in here today, man. I've been wanting to talk to you for so long. This will be my third Kentucky Derby. Okay. And being there in person, it's been an incredible experience, but now I have a million questions. <laughs> so this is perfect. Being able okay, to sit, great. Here, just sit here and talk I to you. I might have man. a few as well. Okay. So I think there's a lot of similarities between a race car driver and a jockey. We're in control of this incredible beast uh, trying to get around the racetrack. And we've had some pretty unique conditions over the last couple of years, rain and so forth, that have muddied up the track. How does that affect the way you're going to yeah, ride Yeah, that's horse? a good point uh, because another reason I like to ride a lot of races is because of the track bias. And it could change. The inside, close to the inside rail might be the place to be. It might not. What and determines it? Well, the amount of water that's put on the track, the amount of uh, wind that's on the track, the temperature of the day. A lot of things can change. You need to be on top of it. Is there ever a situation where maybe the conditions are too bad? What would be bad conditions? Well, the, the rain always complicates things, but horses, they're, they're outdoor animals. So they're used to running through fields just naturally in all kinds of footing. Mm -hmm. And look, their feet go right down to the bottom called the subsurface of the track, and they get good traction there. Yeah. Some like it better than others, depends on their pedigree sometimes, but the ones that handle it the best are the ones that kind of get up close to the front. Yeah. An hour before the race, where's your mind? What are you doing? I'm just trying to remember the horses in the race that I want to follow, especially if I'm a come from behind horse. It's a lot like a running back with a blocker. I study the horses and know who can get me through that pack, who I can follow, probably like cars. Yeah. Who can I follow that'll get me at least to the top of the stretch and then I'll find my own spot but the competition is really important for us to know and which horse is which. How much time do you spend with the horse you're gonna ride? When do you meet this horse for the first time? Sometimes it's a blind date. Really? I'll never see the horse before I walk in the paddock and get on him. And that very day? Fun. That day. And no I've way. ridden some of my best races in the biggest races. Do you just- On horses just, I've never seen before. <laughs> you, go, you go up to the trainer and go, hey, tell me what, what, what I need to do here. Is this, a, is this a closer? Is this a horse that needs to be out front? So I rode a horse named Arcon. He was from France. I could get no video on him, no past performances. I said, I'll ask the trainer. <laughs> the trainer was nowhere to be found in the paddock. So I got on him and I saw the trainer finally. He wished me good luck and that's it. <laughs> the horse won at 132 to one. Oh my God. Because I let the horse run the way he wanted to run. And you can connect immediately in the first in the first few moments of that race, you just know horses so well, you're like, oh, I can tell what this one needs. So you ever rent a car? Sure. Okay, you get in the car, you yeah. adjust the mirrors yeah. and the seat. Yeah. You know the rest to do. Yeah. It's yeah. A, kind of the same way with horses. They say the squeaky wheel gets the grease and I was crying all day, I didn't have a great chance, so he really ran super. As a viewer, we all talk about the horses, we talk about the odds of the horses. Mm -hmm. Does the jockey care one bit about the odds of that horse? I make no more money if my horse is 150 to one as I do if he's two to one. Mm -hmm. uh, that's for the betters. Yep. The only difference for us the, uh, regarding the odds is when you go in as a heavy favorite, all the other competitors <laughs> yeah. know you're the favorite so, yes, and you have, a target, you. you have a target on your back wow. where if you're 50 to one, yeah. you're under the radar completely and nobody cares about yeah. you and nobody thinks about you. Happy Jack appears to be being backed out of the starting gate here. This is one particular scenario that fascinates me. If your horse has a difficult time staging, are you concerned? They're like people, they have different personalities, and yeah. some just don't like to be in there. If they do it all the time, we're not concerned. If it's abnormal behavior, we're concerned. That means they're overwhelmed by the moment. It's so fascinating, as soon as the last horse is in, it's, it's one second or two seconds in the, and, and they're, they're, they're off. What the starter will try and do is make sure everybody is standing as straight as they possibly can before the last one goes yeah. in. And sometimes the tailgate doesn't even get shut on the last horse and the front opens. Why is that so important that this, this process is as soon as the last horse is in, it's literally a second later and they're off? It's a best chance for everybody to get a fair start. And they're breathing fire in there. I mean, these horses are bred to do nothing but 
run as soon as the gate opens. Right. I'm guessing you're pretty stat static in the early parts of the race. You're biding your time, yeah. saving your, your fuel, your yeah. energy. It's a long way to go. You try not to do anything that's gonna damage the car or use the car unnecessarily in any way. Right. And you're also feeling out your competition. Right. Who's got a great car today? Whose car's making some good moves? Not so gonna... when you see a responsive car in the middle of the race, that's the guy that if you're gonna follow somebody, you kinda wanna follow yeah. him. Right. Yep. So similar to us. I mean, we're static in the early part of the race. <laughs> They're off in the Kentucky Derby. So from the moment you come out of the gate, mm -hmm. you're holding that horse back from its full potential. That's correct, you're, you're reserving him. Right. You look around and see which guy has a lot of horse mm -hmm. because we don't have the luxury of a gas gauge. And, and so we have to feel that. Yeah. You know, how much is a horse pulling on you? How eager is he to run? If he's real eager, you know you have plenty of gas. Yeah. And you pretty well know from the past performances that you've studied before, which horses are gonna finish well, and you wanna get behind those. And if you look up and you see a guy three lengths in front of you, and that horse is just pulling him in the race, you know you better stay close because once the rider opens his hands and lets those reins loose and gives the horse his head, that horse is gonna take off. So when, when the bumping is going on, what's good and what's bad? What are you trying to avoid? What's acceptable? So bumping is acceptable to a certain degree out there because it doesn't really cause a lot of harm it's, as long as it's not overdone. You can go shoulder to shoulder. You want to avoid as much as possible because it's like walking in a crowded street. You keep getting jostled around, it takes energy out of your horse. On the track, we, we obviously do a lot of bumping with our race cars, but some of it can get out of hand. One of the guys that put the bumper to quite a few competitors in his time was my dad. Uh, and, and yes. A lot of people loved it, and we thought it was really cool. We had the moniker, the Intimidator, but some of the stuff you know, is obviously very aggressive. Looking at some of the things that we could get away with on the racetrack. Um, wow. That brought the fans to their feet. Obviously, you know, this probably wouldn't fly out on the horse track. <laughs> so you wouldn't imagine that driving in race cars, you can't see the other drivers, but we do see body language in the way a guy maneuvers his car around. You can tell when the other drivers are being a little bit up on the wheel or calming down or trying to pace themselves. But with you, you're absolutely able to see everything that the other riders right. are doing. Some right. of the, what are some of the cues that you're paying attention to? Yeah, so it, way back in the back, I can't tell you know what the lead guy is doing. But once we get to critical mass, once we get to the final turn and into the stretch, I'm very well aware of the guys 20, 30 feet in front of me and around me. And the guys that are real still and haven't started pushing their arms and have a firm grip on the reins, those are the guys that have a lot of horse left. Uh -huh. They got a lot of gas in the tank left. That's how we tell, we don't have a gas gauge, mm -hmm. but we can tell how much the horse is pulling, how willing the horse is for his rider. And when I look up and I see a guy that has yet to ask his horse for his best and is not pushing on the horse, I know he's got a lot of horse and a lot of gas left in the tank, so I better get up close. Conversely, if going into that far turn, a rider's already relaxed his hands and given the reins to his horse, given the horse's head to him to let him run faster, he's probably not gonna last Going in, in the, the stretch. So let's talk about the finish. Okay. How to make the right move at the right time. I've often wondered in horse racing, what are the things that are happening that make you make those decisions when you make them? A lot of it's fate, a lot of it's good luck, a lot of it's skill, and a lot of it's the horse willing to go through very, very tight holes. Just because you point a horse at a tight hole doesn't mean that he's gonna go through there. And I love the ones that have enough courage so, you know, I, I've said this before to you that I think it's 90% horse and 10% jockey, but once in a while, I felt I made the difference in racing. A daring move there by Jerry Bailey. It's a photo finish that doesn't deserve a loser. This is one of the instances. This was at Saratoga, my favorite place to race, and I was on the rail with a red hat, and it was a filly by the name of you. Not only was she courageous, she was left at the post. I had to come from last, not her accustomed style. And then I had to squeeze through the narrowest openings in order to, uh, to beat the horse on the outside. But to me, the best feeling for a jockey, and it happened in both my derbies, I, I really thought, is when what I did during the running of the race made the difference between winning and losing. That was the most satisfying to me. And I'm sure you feel the same. I have a, an instance where I too felt like that I was put in a position to make some moves that, I, that were gonna determine whether I won or lost. And I had the dominant car. 
again, and you know, like you said, where it's 90% horse most cases, in Daytona, the car is really, really important. The car is gonna really be able to determine whether the driver's gonna win the race or not, and in this case, I had the best car. And so I had to make the right decision to get in front of the right person at the right time to get the right push. The 12 goes oh, to yeah. the middle, I move down, and when we lock up right here, it shoots my car forward right there. I fly forward, and now I try to jump to the outside of the 10 and take that momentum and continue that momentum. The momentum was enough from the 12 through that corner to clear the 10 into the lead. I felt like, obviously, I had an amazing race car, the best car there, without a doubt. Right. But I had to make the right moves to, to put myself in those positions. Here comes C. Hero, charging through on the inside to Gary Bailey. This is the 1993 Kentucky Derby. I was on kind of a long shot. His name was C. Hero, and he came from pretty far back in the race. As you're starting to turn to head home, are you going, I can't believe this horse. What, a, what an incredible. He was giving me that feeling around yeah. the turn. And then when I found the opening, I, I knew I was going to win the last 120 you yards. You knew it. it. Yes. Yeah. I'm sure like you, incredible <laughs> feeling. I mean, I. When you know it's, it's, well, I mean, it's I, there. I know I've got a chance to win, but I never know till like we're a few feet from the finish line. I'm like, okay, I'm, no one's going to pass me now, but. Is this really happening? Yeah, right. I know what it feels like, and so do you, to be the winner on any given day, right? But those two races, the Daytona 500 and the Kentucky Derby, are they're different. They hold so much prestige and esteem, right? And so much respect. And I know what it feels like to win the Daytona 500. Don't know what it feels like to win the Kentucky Derby. So what is that feeling? It's probably very similar. I mean, uh, I felt it defined me. When somebody comes off the street and, and I meet them for the first time, the first question they're gonna ask is, did you ride the Kentucky Derby? The second is, did you win it? Yeah. I'm guessing it's the same thing for you. Yeah, sometimes they say when you win the Daytona 500, it's gonna change your life, right? And so you were already celebrated, had won so many races in your career, but when you win the Derby, how does that change your life? Oh, it, it, it puts you on that list that owners of these great horses will call when they want the best jockey that yeah. they can possibly get. So yeah, it elevates you in the standings of anybody that owns horses. Well, Jerry, I mean, I've had a great conversation oh. with you, man. I've learned so much. I've wanted to have this conversation ever since I started going to the Derby. Thank you so much for coming today, but I got a treat for you. Okay. We talked about horsepower. Okay. I want to show you a little bit about my type of horsepower. So let's do it. Let's I'm, I'm ready. All right. I got something for you, bud. I want you to learn what it's like to get around a racetrack. Right. Jockey size race cars. You're gonna love this. Gas on the right, brake on the left. You ready? <laughs> I think he likes this. <laughs> <laughs> 